Mr. Grossinger. Good morning, Chairman Durbin, Ranking Member Graham, Senators Klobuchar and Lee, and members of the committee. My name is Jack Retzinger. I am the co-founder and, and CEO of SeatGeek. And like so many millions, I am a fan. I grew up in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Some of my happiest childhood memories are going to see Cleveland Crunch games with my dad. That's an indoor soccer team, uh, seeing Cavs games with friends. My co-founders and I started SeatGeek because we believe profoundly in the power of live events, of these magical things that create incredible moments and yet believe that the experience of actually buying tickets is very much the opposite. It's antiquated, ripe for innovation. I've spent the last 13 plus years working in this industry, and there are three things that are clear to me and are clear to many others who work in live entertainment. Number one, a lack of robust competition in our industry meaningfully stunts innovation, and consumers are who suffer. Number two, Venues fear losing Live Nation concerts if they don't use Ticketmaster. And number three, the only way to restore competition in this industry is to break up Ticketmaster and Live Nation. Some quick background on SeatGeek. We started the company in 2009, and initially, as was mentioned, we were a search engine that allowed users to search across a lot of sites. Company evolved, we grew over time, and importantly to this discussion, in 2016, we entered the primary ticketing market. Throughout our evolution, we have maintained intense focus on the consumer. We've launched many industry-first features that make it easier and more affordable for fans to go to events. And I'm super proud of all of the work that we've done at SeatGeek, but I also recognize the ongoing challenges that face our industry, some of which have recently been front page news. The best way to address those challenges is to ensure there is robust competition where businesses and consumers can select the best products and services based on their merits. That does not happen today. It does not happen because Live Nation controls the most popular entertainers in the world, routes most of the large tours, operates the ticketing systems, and even owns many of the venues. This power over the entire live entertainment industry allows Live Nation to maintain its monopolistic influence over the primary ticketing market. As long as Live Nation remains both the dominant concert promoter and ticketer of major venues in the US, the industry will continue to lack competition and struggle. As discussed, Live Nation Entertainment is the product of the 2010 merger of Ticketmaster and Live Nation. And as, as was also mentioned, they entered into a consent decree, which banned Ticketmaster from threatening or retaliating against venues by withholding Live Nation concerts. That did not work, it has not worked at all. The DOJ's 2009 investigation confirmed that Live Nation had violated the consent decree repeatedly, almost since its inception. The DOJ identified numerous examples of Live Nation threatening and retaliating against venues that did not contract with Ticketmaster. Today, Ticketmaster's estimated market share is over 70% of the US primary ticketing market. Ticketmaster is the primary ticketing provider for more than 80% of the NBA, NHL, and NFL teams. Live Nation is also the largest promoter of major concerts in the world, promoting more than 73% of the top 25 tours in, uh, in the US in 2021. It is no mystery why no other company has significantly penetrated the primary ticketing market. Major venues in the US know that if they move their primary ticketing business from Ticketmaster, they risk losing revenue they earn from Live Nation concerts. They know this because Live Nation has told them so directly and indirectly, through its public pronouncements, private communications, and subsequent retaliation against venues that have signed deals with a competitor. The DOJ found that as a consequence of Live Nation's conduct, quote, venues throughout the United States have come to expect that refusing to contract with Ticketmaster will result in the venue receiving fewer Live Nation concerts or none at all, unquote. Our industry provides a cautionary tale about how behavioral remedies cannot solve the problems inherent in an anti-competitive merger. The only effective remedy now is a structural one, the dissolution of the common ownership of Ticketmaster and Live Nation. To improve our industry, we must restore competition. At SeatGeek, we deeply care about the live event industry and believe it's time to give fans, teams, artists, and venues alike the choices they deserve. It's a privilege to be included in this discussion. Thank you so much for your time and attention. 
Thank you very much.